Let's rise up for the world. We are taking God's commendation for holy service and ministers. God's commendation for holy service and ministers. Let us pray. Father, we are grateful. You are happy with us. You are happy with everyone that does a good job in the right motive, in the right state. Thank you, Father. You commend us to encourage us to do more. You have eternal rewards for those who are faithful in life and service. And these before you are your ministers. May they be encouraged by your commendation. Put the spirit of God in them. Steer them out by your word to do more for God in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. When Jesus, God, became man, God the Father said unto him, Thy throne, O Lord, is forever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness, and hatest wickedness. Therefore, the Lord thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Who, which fellows? He was a human being, so we, we are his fellows. Human beings around them were his fellows. He was higher than them all. Yet a man. Why? Because he loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Now we're going to sing that song in the book of Psalm 45. Psalm 45. Verse 6 and 7. Thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter verse 6 again thy throne O God is forever of thy kingdom is a right set verse 7 thou lovest righteousness righteousness and hatest wickedness hallelujah therefore God, thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Therefore, therefore, God, thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of 
gladness above thy faith. To show that he referred to Jesus, God thy God. It was God the Father talking to this God the Son. And both is God. The Father is God. The Son is God. But one person. Now let's see it again. Verse 6. Thy throne, O God. That God the Father is talking to God the Son. Let's go. One, two, go. Thy throne, O God, is forever. And Scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thy throne, O Lord, is forever. Righteousness, righteousness, and hate test wickedness. Hallelujah. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the Oh yeah, oh gladness above the set time. Therefore, God, thy God has anointed thee with the oil yeah, of glad. Above thy fellows. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9, Paul showed us the two gods mentioned in Psalm 45, verse 6 and 7. He showed that one was Jesus and the other was God the Father. Look at Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 8 and 9. We're going to sing the same song. Are you there? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. But unto the Son he said, Let's go. Thy throne, O God, is for a and even a scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter repeat thy throne O God is for a And even a scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Verse 9. Thou lovest righteousness, righteousness. Not hate is iniquity. Hallelujah. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee 
with the oil of gladness above that fail us therefore God even thy God had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. You can see the book that is coming up, they have got to get it bound it and to break them, will explain how Jesus is God that we serve. The Father is God that we serve. The Holy Spirit is God that we serve. But we have one God. Not three gods, but one God. Man is body, spirit, and soul, but is one man. Amen? So, as the Lord spoke of Jesus when he was a man, that because you demonstrated righteousness and showed clearly your zeal against iniquity your zeal against sin and evil god saw it and has anointed the anointed day with the oil of gladness above all thy fellows fellow human beings fellow human beings he was talking to Jesus as a man. And it remains the formula that God, when he sees righteousness in you, he sees how you hate stubbornness, you hate iniquity, you hate evil, he will promote you. He will lift you up. And that's why in our message, God's commendation for holy service and ministers. There are people in this world who, through proper use of the grace of God, live righteous and holy life and render good, holy, and acceptable service unto God. The Lord commends such people and desires every servant of his to be like them. God is faithful and never changes so also is his pure world the world does not change his ministers also should not change they should remain faithful to him in life and to his word in ministry in the book of hebrews chapter 13 hebrews chapter 13 verse 7 and verse 8 remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of god whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forevermore let's read it together verse 7 and verse 8 one to god Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Verse 8. There is a trinity found there not the original trinity but a trinity found there the trinity is the man of god the word of god and jesus christ jesus is the same yesterday today and forever the word that he has given to him, the man of god doesn't change it means the same yesterday, today, and forever. And a faithful man of God 
who has gotten the pure word of God should never change in his teaching and preaching. He should be the same yesterday, today, and until he dies. This should be a trinity. Look at it, what Paul said in the book of First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful what is faithfulness faithfulness means unchanging unchangeability faithfulness means stable stability faithfulness means constant remaining constant all the time yes never changing character never changing form don't meddle with them that are given to change this movement will not change in teaching in the truth we are standing on i will not change in these doctrines because there is a trinity that is formed the man of god the original man of god and knows god and knows his word the word of god and the lord of the man of god the word of god personified called jesus if this be so you who started this thing have you changed you who preached holiness have you changed if you have changed you are not in this trinity relationship with jesus you are not dependable we cannot trust you and the bible says don't meddle with them that are given to change they are pastors bishops great men founders of churches that have changed they have changed you see they used to preach against earrings before against wearing of trousers or pants as others call it against this against that before against palming of the hair against attachment but they have no stop it don't meddle with them they are not in this relationship a trinity relationship with god with jesus now the lord wants a new relationship between you and himself a trinity relationship that you as he is so you will be in this world don't change his word his word doesn't change don't adjust the world to the situation and conditions of life to the decrees of the government to traditions to the behavior of anybody maybe your own character please even if you are a sinner if opportunity comes to speak the word preach against yourself are you hearing me the word doesn't change don't adjust it to the condition of your wife maybe your wife is that tough one that will not bow and you say you start twisting it so that people will not see her sin stand to it the word doesn't change jesus doesn't change don't adjust it because of your children because of the behavior of your children you are avoiding the world or you're interpreting some things away don't do that stand to the world forever oh lord tell me the rest exactly thy word is settled in heaven now i'm talking about the holy life and ministry of noah the holy life see how god commended that man but see the situation in his time see how he labored for himself for his family and the surrounding people although he never got the people he got himself and got his family and see what the lord said about him 
But now, in the book of Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Second Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. It says, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. The Lord chose him in his day to end up the world, judge the people who were stubborn to his preaching. He judged the world. Now, Noah, as we see it here, a preacher of righteousness and holiness in his day. The wickedness of men on earth was great in the sight of God. To the point that he regretted to have created men on earth. All religious institutions of worship had collapsed and had become apostate in the days of Noah. They were not listening to his preaching. They didn't bother about it. They didn't bother. Look at it in Genesis chapter, chapter 6, verse 5 to verse 7 and 11 and 12. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5. The word of God says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually and it repented the lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that i have made man can you read verse 8 one two go but noah found grace in the eyes of the lord can you see in a dark world where the creator himself was regretting that he met man there was a man that comforted his heart what was his name noah 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 in a world that collapsed satan took over man submitted to satan but there was a man that didn't submit it's always like that my brethren when all the people bowed down to the image of Nebuchadnezzar Shadrach Meshach and Abednego said we will not bow down we will not bow down that is it. These were the people that comforted God. Comforted God. We will not bow down to your image. Can we really say there are people here at this time that the church has collapsed in righteousness. Darkness has taken over. Ministry is gone into demonism. Are there people here that are comforting God? Sure. God wants to commend those people. God wants to thank those people. God wants to praise those people for not changing in this corrupt world. God wants to appreciate you that you never change in doctrine, you never change in life, you never change in any form. You remain true. Yes. Yes. In verse 11 of Genesis chapter 
6. The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. All flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. But Noah was a just man, righteous and holy, and taught godliness in his day. This gave him divine favor, divine grace before the Lord. Yes, he had a divine grace. Noah was fully obedient to the commandments of God both in life and in service fully obedient to the commandments of god yes both in life and in service look at verse 22 of chapter 6 does did Noah, according to all that god commanded him so did he this is righteousness this is righteous ministry. This is a righteous minister. There are some of you that are avoiding the teaching of the word of God. You avoid teaching against earrings. You avoid teaching against palming. You avoid teaching against women wearing trousers, pants. You avoid teaching against the truth. You don't even teach restitution. You avoid teaching against people who are married to two wives, three wives, you avoid that. You are not righteous. You are not the time the Lord will come in. No, you are not. The clear word of God that you see, you avoid it. You are not original. You don't have backbone. You are among the failures in the days of Noah. God cannot commend you. God cannot recognize you until you can develop the spirit of Noah righteous teaching everything everything nobody influenced him contrary he feared no man yes that was Noah in his generation righteousness reduced to his family only before God every other person was fake was hypocritical Satan had taken over all except Noah and his family. Righteousness. How many thousands of people, millions of people that were in the world, how many billions of people that were in the world, when people could live to 900 years without dying, without dying, and start giving birth to children maybe at 100 and continue giving birth to children 900 years how many people would have been in the world but in the day of noah righteousness collapsed onto one family a man and his family what's your problem if the lord tells you that right, he does not see righteousness but in a place what's your problem if the lord says i see no other place that will uphold this gospel until a movement in the days of noah do you know how many people were there do you know how much hypo hypocrisy was going on but the lord recognized nobody you have you only have i seen righteous in my side you only righteousness has collapsed look into churches is jesus not weeping over this corruption in churches corruption in ministers which minister will you now come to look onto listen if you cannot find real righteousness going on in nigeria in many of these congregations i will want to say <laughs> don't have hope for other parts of the world don't have hope because they are sons and daughters of nigerian pastors only few came up from among themselves yet they still copy the same thing they still copy the same thing 
very few know the Lord world around us remnant only remnant because of the pollutions what do you say about some of these our churches that since their founding they've they are founding right in the 60s, in the 50s, in the 90s, in the 18th centuries. They don't have the true, total truth of the gospel. And they have lived in it to our day. What do you say about the Catholic Church that have upheld Mary, the mother of Jesus, right far back to the Dark Ages? In the 12th century or whatever up to this time they have not changed up to this time and they are increasing they are increasing the percentage of Christianity in the world as I understood is 34 percent and from this 34 percent Catholics is 17.3 percent so where are the other Christians? Apart from Je Jehovah's Witness are among the remaining 16%. Cherubim and Seraphim. Ongozu Obodo. Or whatever. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm telling you to understand the deplorable state of righteousness in the present world. That, so that you should humble you who want to go to heaven and submit to the word of God submit to the counsel of God the directive that God is given to you that's what you need to understand yes righteousness degenerated by his lifestyle of righteousness and holiness God saved him from evil and destruction Genesis chapter 7 verse 1 and the Lord said unto Noah come down and all thy house into the ark for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation in the whole of this generation I see only you the Lord will save you only few shall be saved in our generation because righteousness really collapsed the Lord will save the righteous the Lord will bless the righteous as you are with him doing his will standing firm on his truth following him demonstrating your love for him in Psalm 91 verse 14 to verse 16 see what the Lord says because he had set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he had known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life will I satisfy him and will show him my salvation you will make the rapture because you have kept yourself holy and God said because you did that he will save your soul God remembered him in every situation of life in Genesis chapter 8 verse 1 Genesis chapter 8 verse 1 and God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the water assuaged because God remembered Noah God remembered Noah God will remember you God will remember you is God not remembering us over this nation? Whatever plan the wicked have been planning, has it worked? It's because we're here. It's because God must protect us. He must be faithful to the righteous. The Lord will remember your family. The Lord will remember your children. The Lord will remember your house. The Lord will remember your wife for yourself. 
He will remember your husband for your sake. He will remember your relation for your sake. The Lord remembered Noah. God blessed his life and ministry on earth in chapter 9 verse 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The Lord will bless your life. The Lord will bless your ministry. The Lord will multiply your life. Because of the righteousness you're standing on. Because of the truth that you're preaching. Because of the holiness of your life. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Yes, God established his covenant with Noah and with his sons. Genesis chapter 9 verse 8 and verse 9. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him saying, And be I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. I will raise up people after you. I make a covenant with you. I am, he told Abraham the same, Abraham, I am the Lord. Look at the Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 and verse 2. It tells us here saying, And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. God wants to make a covenant with you in ministry. He wants to make a covenant with you in service. Concerning what he wants to use you to do in this world. Walk before him and be thou perfect. And again, God commended Noah God commended Noah in the book of Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 14 Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 14 the Bible tells us here saying though these three men Noah Daniel and Job were in it they should deliver by their own souls by their righteousness said the lord <laughs> these were people with peculiar righteousness in peculiar circumstance of life may the lord recommend your life may the lord recognize your peculiar righteousness in peculiar situation of life in jesus name the commendation of God for righteous service and ministry for righteous life and ministry number two the life and ministry of Daniel life and ministry of Daniel Daniel served the Lord in righteousness and holiness in his academic training he kept himself from defilement in his service in secular society and government he behaved himself faithful and blameless he was dedicated and uncompromising in his devotion to god look at it in daniel chapter 1 verse 8 daniel chapter 1 i read verse 8 the bible tells us saying but daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat nor with the wine which he drank therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself he was in training he was in a school he never cheated he never joined gang he never joined occult. No, in school, he was sincere and faithful. He never ate things sacrificed to idols because he loved his God, because he would serve his God. See Daniel getting himself prepared for ministry. That's how he lived his life. Yeah, that's how he grew up. Even when he got employment with the government, Daniel was holy. Look at it in chapter 6, verse 1 
to verse 4 chapter 6 verse 1 to verse 4 the bible says it pleased darius to set over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom and over these three presidents of whom daniel was first that the princes might give accounts unto them and the king should have no damage then this daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm then the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against daniel concerning the kingdom but they could find none occasion no fault for as much as he was faithful neither was there any error or fault found in him are you like that or oh, as you're walking with the government you're cheating there and say you say you're a christian you sign false document in the office you say you're a christian you sell the property of the company you say you are a christian people can connive with you not daniel everybody said not daniel righteous they went through files they went through files and noticed that there was no fault in the file just no evil they went purposely they couldn't find and they, in fact, they testified in verse 5, saying, They said this mean, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Otherwise, as for moral, whatever, it will never work. So they quickly met the king connived with the king for a decree that nobody should worship any other god except the king himself for a period of 30 days and that the king should sign such decree and that no man should break that decree and be free daniel saw that it was a plot against him against his righteousness will he decrease this righteousness no i will be faithful until death even God says so. Ye shall have the tribulation ten days. The devil shall cast all of you to prison. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give you the crown of life. Don't change because you are going to die. Hey, if I don't know, they will kill me. What is They will kill you. Is that not the way to heaven? If they kill you, are you not going to heaven? Are you not looking for heaven? Can anybody actually kill you if God doesn't allow it? Can anybody do it? Not possible. Not possible. Nobody can do it. Then why, why do you give up Christianity? Because you are afraid. Fear not. I am with you. That's what God said. Don't embarrass him. You tell lies in the presence of God and Satan laughs in mockery against your creator against your savior don't do that again daniel so all that they had said and say go ahead take your plot my god is greater than you by the way he knew all these things before they came to pass so let me know what how he's going to end it so the bible tells us saying verse 10 now queen daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward jerusalem he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his god as he did the fourth time he promoted god in the kingdom of babylon in the kingdom of darius he promoted god in that kingdom among the hidden is that what you're doing or you compromise because ah the president said the president said your body is shaking and the governor the governor has said the governor said your body is shaking and it is the director general is your body. the minister has said and the chairman has said you're not a correct christian 
not the one God will commend not the one God will thank Jesus for I'm telling you Daniel stood in the presence of problem challenge not before the Sanhedrin not before the local assembly of your church local assembly of your church or maybe Eli sitting down there as one of the pastors and say oh, come here it's, uh, 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 Bishop Bishop my Lord Bishop what are you doing that thing for you want to embarrass Jesus because of a bishop you want to embarrass Jesus you want to hide the truth of Jesus when day will the Lord show that man mercy when day will the Lord manifest his power that that man should fear him promise God you will stand everywhere you will stand everywhere everybody say God forgive me I will stand for you everywhere exactly I will stand for you everywhere everywhere that's what God demands of you that was the righteousness of Daniel standing for God everywhere and look at it in verse 16 of Daniel chapter 6 then the king commanded and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions now the king spake and said unto Daniel thy God whom thou servest continually he will deliver thee as for the three Hebrews children they said to King Nebuchadnezzar our God will deliver us but he may not choose to deliver us it might be our exit from earth to heaven maybe he planted this way but whichever way we will not bow down be ready to accept attack for righteousness be ready to accept divorce in marriage for righteousness be ready to accept excommunication from the church for righteousness be ready to accept termination of service for righteousness that's what God wants it is what he wants he wants people he will come in people that have his spirit Daniel had an excellent spirit in his life he wants such people to be in his service he wants them to represent him everywhere he wants them to be pillars in his church these are the people God is looking for not fearful people go and announce to them whoever is afraid should go back home that's what the Lord is saying Daniel was sound incorruptible and uncompromising in life and ministry he did not fear to tell King Nebuchadnezzar the truth he was not covetous in ministry nor given to the praise of men hey King Nebuchadnezzar dreamed a dream this dream if it was you that was called to interpret it you don't look at King Nebuchadnezzar you say if I tell this man the truth I won't come out from this office I will die here you're not ready to die for Jesus why are you giving power to man above God why do you give power to the president above God why do you give power to the to, to any religion above God why do you give power to any ruler above God how will you not tell the truth how will you not speak the truth why will you not stand for Jesus are you his true servant are you faithful are you truly looking for heaven that's the question Daniel before King Nebuchadnezzar he will interpret his dream for him terrible dream Nebuchadnezzar you are soon going to become an animal in the bush Nebuchadnezzar you are so stubborn God will punish you God that is the interpretation of your dream look at it in Daniel chapter 4 I read verse 24 to 27 Daniel chapter 4 and he said this is the interpretation O king and this is the decree of the most high which is come upon my lord the king that they shall drive thee from men and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and they shall wait thee with the dew of heaven and seven times shall pass over thee till thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he, he will and whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree root thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee when you repent after that thou shall have known that the heavens do rule 
Are we going to have people that will show the Muslims that we are not second class in this country? Are there people that will stand in the government and say Jesus is the king over Nigeria? Jesus is the king over Abuja. He is the king over Lagos. He is the king over Sokoto. He is the king over Niger. He is the king over Kaduna. He is the king over everywhere. Are there people to stand? I said the Lord loose you from all that fear. May the power of the Lord come upon your life. May the power of the Lord break your life. Loose you now. Go for Jesus. All those fears in your life must die. That fear in your body must die. And let you stand for Jesus. No sword shall be raised against you. No spear shall be raised against you. No God shall be raised against you. Because the heaven and the earth belong to God. In the name of Jesus, continue. Every knee must bow. And every tongue. One set your brethren free. Tell them we are overcomers in this country. We will not be second class. I say we will not be second class. If they are not giving you an appointment, go and change it. I say go and change it. If they send some strange men to the offices, change it by prayer. Ye shall decree it and God will establish it. Cowards. You are giving God shame. The people who are in Senate are not talking. They're fearing that they will kill them. Who told you? Who told you? People in House of Representatives are not talking. Big men are not talking. If they don't know our God, we know Him. Yes. Do you know God? Yes. Will you speak for God? Yes. Who is Boko Haram? Who is who? Before Jesus. Jesus is in his church. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silenced before him. Glory, 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 glory. what the Lord is saying that's what he wants of your life yes this is Daniel <laughs> uh, Bethesda also had his dream and they called Daniel to come and interpret the dream Daniel ended the kingdom of that man that day that's what the will of God was that they declared it unto him. Look at it in Daniel chapter 5, verse 9 to 14. Daniel chapter 5, verse 9 to verse 14. The Bible tells us about <laughs> that man Daniel. I want to be like Daniel. You will sing it, but you're not going to do it. You want to sing that? <laughs> Praise the Lord! The Bible tells us, Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled in him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote against one another. The king cried aloud, to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. 
let not thy thoughts trouble thee nor let thy countenance be changed there is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy ghost and in the days of thy father light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him whom the king Nebuchadnezzar thy father the king I say thy father made master of the magicians astrologers Chaldeans and soothsayers for as much as an excellent spirit and understanding interpretation of dreams and showing of heart sentences and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belteshazzar now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation you wish this Daniel were a Nigerian do you wish Daniel were a Nigerian pray that the Lord will raise them up not just one to put an end to noise coming from proud kings to bring forth the word of God that will humble them and take away the throne from their hands yes then was Daniel brought in before the king and the king spake and said unto Daniel I doubt that Daniel which art of the children of the captivity of Judah whom the king my father brought out of Jewry I've even heard of thee that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee and now the wise men the astrologers have been brought in before me that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof but they could not show the interpretation of the thing and I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom then Daniel answered and said before the king say it let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another yet I will read the writing unto the king and made known unto him the interpretations hallelujah not a covetous pastor not a covetous prophet not a covetous past doing the work of God with covetousness when he sends you with the message you go and collect money collect money and shut up your mouth not Daniel not Daniel keep your gifts with you because when I finish your kingdom will finish <laughs> there won't be opportunity for second or third ruler so keep your gift there besides I don't wear chain I don't wear gold put your things there give it to another person hallelujah that is Daniel that is Daniel yes and then Daniel said all thou king the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor and for the majesty that he gave him all people nations and languages trembled and feared before him whom he would he slew and whom he would he kept alive and whom he would he set up and whom he would he put down but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him and he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beast and his dwelling was with the wild asses they, they fed him with grass like oxen and his body was weighed with the dew of heaven till he knew that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men and that he appointed over it whomsoever he will is God the ruler of Nigeria? 
is God the ruler of Nigeria? Yeah. Is he the is he, is he that brings up president and removes president? Yeah. Then why are you afraid? Why are you afraid of your president? Why are you afraid of your ruler? Why don't you look to God and the matter is the over? Why don't you tell God what you desire? God is alive. God is alive. God is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He remains the ruler of Nigeria. He remains the ruler of Nigeria. He is, he is the greatest king over the north, over the south, over the west, over the central, over the everywhere. He is the king of kings, the lord of lords. Before him, every knee shall bow the knee of man, the knee of he, the knee of any ruler of religion, any man that is seal of a false religion, his knee shall bow to Jesus. Therefore, be free. Just worship him. Just raise up the hand and praise Jesus. Say, Jesus, mission that name. Honor him. Honor him. Honor him. Honor him. Honor him. Honor him. He is the Lord of hosts. The Lord of all. The Lord of all. The Lord of all. The Lord over the presidential file. The Lord over Asu Lord. The Lord over Abuja. The Lord over Northern Nigeria. Lord over Sokoto. Lord over Kaduna. Lord over Kanu, Lord over Katila, Lord over Chigawa, Lord over, over Niger, Lord over Adamawa, Lord over Borno State, Lord over Dobe State, Lord over Kebi, Lord over Kwara, Lord over Oyo State, over Lagos State, over Edo State, over, over Delta State, over River State, over Bayesa State, over Abia State, Lord over Imu State, Lord over Nambara State, Lord over Inugu, Lord over Iboye, Lord of Akrosiva, Lord of Akwaibo, Lord of Binwe, Lord of Plato, Lord of Bauchi, Lord of Gombe, Lord of Taraba, Lord of everywhere, 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 He is Lord over the whole world. Trust the Lord, call upon Him, it will work. Sit down, everybody. Wake up to Jesus and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the gun. Cease to be afraid of Boko Haram from today. Cease. Let the church not fear. It's because of the church backsliding. That's why the enemy are pushing them up and down. It's because they're not righteous. They have forgotten him. He allowed them. He called them. He, he, he said, Nebuchadnezzar is my minister. I sent him to Jerusalem because the people are too stubborn there. It's because of the backsliding state of Christians in Nigeria that the Lord is allowing them. Otherwise, where, where, do they have power of their own? Do they have power of their own? The Lord even came to judge Nebuchadnezzar. He said, is it because I sent you to, to judge my people? Now that you are proving you are proud, you are, you, you, you are treating them very terribly, uh, I will turn to you now. I said, I will turn to you now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Daniel gave the interpretation to the king and said thou art measured in a balance and found one thing. Your kingdom has been taken from you and is given to another better than yourself. And that night the, the kingdom of Belshazzar came to an end. The kingdom of Babylon came to an end. The, the Middle Persians took over because God said so. Everything has been planned. No man brings in any new thing that is not in the register and not in the map of God. Amen. Give a clap of hand to Jesus. He is in control. Amen. Now, just let's move quickly to other things the life and ministry of Paul the Apostle Paul at salvation was given defined ministry and doctrines he was told he would suffer many things for the Lord he had scales of spiritual blindness over his eyes I was persecuting the true way until his encounter with Jesus Christ. 
in Christ, Paul submitted his life to holy living. In Acts chapter 24, verse 16, the Bible tells us what Paul said. And hearing do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience. No offense. I won't tell lies. I won't cheat. I won't do evil to any man. I won't oppress any man. No. I ensure my way is just. I check up what I say. If I've said it wrongly, I will apologize. That is my life. No offense. No offense. Hear it. Do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God in the secret, toward me? In the public, in First Thessalonians chapter two, verse ten. First Thessalonians chapter two, verse ten. Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe we I encourage those around me <laughs> not only me others also to live holy to live justly to live unblameably before believers before believers as for unbelievers some of them are so hardened they don't even know the meaning of righteousness so they may not commend it they may still be finding fault because hey you're praying your prayer is too loud you people are disturbing us in this society you are evil people unbelievers can challenge like that but those that believe whose eyes have opened to righteousness to the love of god they don't see fault in our lives this is how paul lived yes he was very zealous for jesus seeking to be filled with the knowledge of christ all things that were gained to me i count loss yeah i count all things but done for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord that I may know him, that I may win him and be found in his own righteousness, not in my righteousness, not in what I think is good, in what God thinks to be good, in what God presents to be good. Yes. And he preached the gospel season and out of season and said woe is me if i preach not the gospel he taught the doctrines of holiness and sought to bring all believers to perfection in christ colossians chapter 1 colossians chapter 1 verse 28 and 29 whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his walking, which worketh in me mightily. I'm laboring. I want everybody to be perfect. I want everybody to be right. I want everybody to be holy. As the ministry of Paul, the strivings of Paul, he did not mind suffering for the gospel of Christ. All 
he wanted to do was because he wanted to inherit eternal life. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Yes. He wanted to inherit eternal life. He said, verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable into his death if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead I don't want to remain in the grave when the trumpet blows calling the dead, the dead in Christ to rise I want to rise I don't want to go to hell I don't want to miss heaven I want to be in heaven so by any means I'm doing all if there's anything pointed out to me from scriptures in right way that I am wrong I correct it no argument I'm not to be found in my own righteousness not your own righteousness but the righteousness which is of Christ righteousness of God in Christ not to be arguing they show you the truth. They say, no, uh, our uh, doctor so-and-so in theological school, professor so-and-so in theological school, is that one Jesus? And he told something different. He said like this, he said like that. Is that person Jesus? Paul said, I'm not going after, after professor. After doctor who? Doctor of divinity. I'm going by Jesus. Because those people are not the one to justify me before God. So anything, tell me. Tell me that the baptism I did is not correct and let me know it by scripture I'm going back for baptism however old I am whether I am a minister whether I am the church founder I'll go back again to baptism I want to be in heaven I don't want to miss anything tell me that this woman I have married I've married her wrongly I will separate however many years we have spent I don't want to go to hell no I'll go to heaven what are you going to tell me again tell me another thing Prove to me that I, I borrowed money from you and I forgot. Prove it. I will pay that money. I will pay it. I don't want to go to hell. I must be in heaven. That's Paul. If by any means I will attain unto the resurrection of the dead, the first resurrection, that was his life. Suffering means nothing, therefore. He said in Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Some of you, just because of shame, you cannot do the will of God. Because ah, people will say, shame? I will never be ashamed. I saw as long as I live. Because I must go to heaven. If, whatever shame it will give me, I take it. Did Jesus not despise the shame to give us heaven? Will I not also despise the shame to go to that heaven? Yes. In chapter 8, Romans 8 verse 18, Paul said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I know it. I know it. In first Cor in, in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, verse 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written? For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord I can't run away from him 
of because of suffering running away from dead when the lord planned that you should be one of the martyrs of his gospel because there's a day of martyr in heaven to celebrate martyr many people will be wishing they had died for jesus and you are running away from dead he said no paul said nothing nothing will separate me from from the love of jesus as peter was running away from dead as they wanted to crucify him he passed jesus on the way going to the cross where they were trying to crucify peter lord where are you going to be crucified again since you don't want for, to be crucified for me ah no i'll go back i'll go back i'll go back i'll go i'll suffer for you the lord marked that you should end up in that way he planned that you should end up in that way he wants your name to enter into the book of martyrdom he wants he has set a day in heaven to celebrate martyrdom and he gave you grace if you refuse which way will you die you want vultures to eat you up you want to die on your own you want to die for no just cause no memorable cause no rewarding cause what are you fearing what are you fearing paul he said what do you mean to weep to break my heart i'm not ready to to suffer in jerusalem alone but to die for the name of jesus for the name of jesus to die and he began to say oh are they boasting that they are jews i am more are they even saying that they are ministers of christ well let me show them my certificate in the book of second corinthians paul began to show in chapter 11 paul began to show his certificate the certificate he has that qualified him as a as a minister of christ yeah he showed them certificate how he became uh, to, to prove that he was a minister of Christ yeah in verse 16 down I say again let no man think me a fool if otherwise yet as a fool receive me that I may bust myself a little boasting of what he achieved no of what he suffered because when jesus resurrected and appeared before his disciples the first thing he showed them was the marks of his suffering i am your lord these are the wounds that i secured in the house of my friends i am the lord see them now paul wants to show that which show, which show that he is fully identified with Christ suffering let me boast a little if, if you think I am a fool allow me to be a fool for a little while yes for yes suffer fools gladly seeing ye yourselves are wise for yes suffer if a man bring you into bondage if a man devour you if a man take off you if a man exalt himself if a man smite you on the face i speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak how be it wherein so ever any is bold i speak foolishly i am bold also are they hebrews so am i are they israelites so am i are they the seed of abraham so am i are they ministers of christ i speak as a fool i am more in labels more abundant in stripes above major in prisons more frequent in deaths oft of the jews five times received i forty stripes save one thrice was i beaten with rods once was i stunned thrice i suffered shipwreck a night and a day i have been in the deep in journeyings often in perils of water in perils of robbers in perils by my own countrymen in perils by the hidden in perils in the city in perils in the wilderness in perils in the in, in, in the sea in peril among all false brethren in weariness and painfulness in watchings often in hunger and thirst in fastings often in cold and nakedness beside those things that are without that which cometh upon me daily the care of all the churches who is weak and i am not weak who is offended and i born not 
If I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmity. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas, the king kept the city of the Damascus with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me, and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. This is my certificate. This is my certificate. Is there anybody here that can have this quality of certificate? Go and check out where Paul is now. He's seated with Christ on the throne. Go and see what the Lord used Paul to do. So great, so great, so great. The Lord gave him abundant gospel revelations. He was made an apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles. He was endued with wisdom to write the books of the mysteries of the church. He worked more than all the apostles by the grace God gave him. He finished his ministry in righteousness and holiness. I have finished my cause. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. I kept righteousness in all the struggles of life, in all the accusation of life, in all the attacks of life. My righteousness, my righteousness remained with me. I didn't throw away righteousness to one fight. No, I, I held to my righteousness. Died. While they were bullying me, I made sure righteousness remained in me. I, until they finished bullying me, righteousness still remained. I started running forward for ministry. I ran, I ran, I ran. I reached my destination. I have kept the faith. I said, I have kept the faith. God has given him grace to keep the faith. My brother, may the Lord give you grace that as you continue, you will reach your end and you will keep the faith. You will reach your end. You will keep the faith, my sister. This faith shall not fall away on the way. It shall not fall away on the way. Amen. Henceforth. There is a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. Not only to me, but those who will learn my example, those who follow the, follow the Lord after my pattern in righteousness and holiness. Ha! The Lord has chosen you to give you the spirit of Paul. The Lord has chosen you in this end time to impart the spirit of Paul into your life. The spirit of Daniel. The spirit of Noah. That is what the Lord wants to do in your life. Yes. He received the crown of righteousness and service. His books became scriptures to guide the new testament church until the end his books somebody came in contact with him he said i didn't know when i was writing those books i didn't know that they would become scripture i found grace in the sight of god who made my book scriptures even the apostles who walked with Jesus on earth needed those books because Peter said, account that the Lord has not come, it is for our salvation. According to the books that the Lord gave Apostle Paul wisdom to write, testifying in them as in other scriptures, which means the books are scriptures. Some things that are hard to be understood. People who are not trained Will, will fail in them, man, will misinterpret them and cause others, others to be damned. Peter read all. And the apostles read all. Those who were alive, they read the writings of Paul and knew that they were scriptures. God gave him that grace. He suffered. He was zealous for the work of God. Finally, God's commendation of the church in Philadelphia in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 to 13. Revelation chapter 3 verse 7 to verse 13. 
the Bible says, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, this thing said he that is holy, he that is true, he that had the key of David, he that opened it, and no man shut it, and shut it, and no man opened it, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, who shall come to upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. What an open door in ministry for the righteous church. Progress for the righteous church, righteous ministry. What an establishment that will come to the righteous church, righteous ministry. The Lord said, I'm going to bring the people. They have been saying they are Christians, they are not. They have not understood my real way. They have not understood my way of righteousness. And many of them want to go to heaven, so I'm bringing them. They will come and serve under you. They will come to recognize your ministry. They will come because thy throne is forever. You love righteousness. You hate iniquity. Therefore, I have decided to fill you, anoint you with the oil of gladness above your fellows, above other churches. That's what the Lord is saying. He said, in fact, the people shall know that I have loved you. I will make people know that I have chosen you. I will make people know that I have loved you. Because you have a little strength. You kept my word and never denied my name. You taught the members of the church to honor my word. To do all that I have commanded. I commend you. I, I will deliver you from temptation and from evil. Which is coming upon other people coming upon other Christians, coming upon other churches, never you, never you, never you, never you, because I'm taking delight in you. I'm taking pleasure in your life. I'm taking pleasure in your ministry. I'm taking pleasure. And when I come, I see I smile. I see everybody run to bow before me when I am there. I see everybody bow. I see everybody waving me. I see everybody waving me. And their hands are clean. Their mouths clean. Their hearts clean. Your ministry is blessed. Your ministry is blessed. The God of heaven is commending your ministry the lord is commending your ministry because of the holiness of life dedication complete submission that you are to god eternal reward eternal reward is yours as you maintain this to the end eternal reward is yours as you maintain this to the end yes the lord will do all these things to this place i am saying the king called him on and said what can the king do to the man that the king loves ah who does the king love more than myself can the king love a corrupt person like you a murderer like you how can the king be loving a murderer is the king madras is the king a wicked man well tell me what can the king do to the man that he loves the man that he loves let the king bring his horse the horse that he himself sits upon let that same cloth beautiful cloth that is normally sprayed upon the horse let it be sprayed upon it then let the king select select his choices servant nobody is, is his choices servant that conducts him let the king select his choices servant and let him now be, carry him round the presidential palace and the city and be announcing everybody bow the knee to this man bow the knee to this man this is what the king does to the man in whom he loves this is what the king does to the man in whom he loves i'm telling you angels are rejoicing in this place angels are rejoicing in this place they are announcing and say this is the church the lord is blessing now this is the church the lord has raised up yeah 
says the, the Lord has played joy in holiness of other movement. The angels are making the announcement everywhere, and I pray angels will make announcement about you too. Angels will make announcement about your ministry. Angels will make announcement because the Lord commits it. Rise up upon your feet and tell the Lord you will be righteous to the end. You will stand to the truth. Preach the truth. Preach the doctrines of righteousness. Never change. The Lord will commend you. Both on earth and in heaven. The Lord will commend you. The Lord will commend your ministry. He will commend you publicly. He will make the people who are opposing to bow to your ministry. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. And begin to tell big promise to God. You will be righteous in ministry. You will be righteous in your life. Your family will be conducted in righteousness. He commends his, he commends righteousness. Thy throne, Lord, is for in the center of thy kingdom is a right center. Thy throne, O oh Lord, is forever. And in the center of thy kingdom is a right center. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness and of thy faithfulness. Therefore, Lord, thy God, has anointed thee with that oil of gladness and of darkness. Therefore, Lord my God, has anointed thee with that oil of gladness. My brother, open your mouth and pray. Promise God. The Lord brought you to this ministry, serving in righteousness and holiness. Chapter leader, unit leader, serve the Lord in righteousness and holiness. Coordinators, coordinators' wives, leader, leaders' wives, serve the Lord in righteousness and holiness. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness and of thy face. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of darkness and of thy face. Daniel's ministry was elongated. The Lord elongated Daniel he served long because his righteous influence must cover all the Lord gave him great knowledge and wisdom he gave him prophetic secrets revelation secrets concerning the future the Lord will use you 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 Come in yourself to him. Plead with him. Tell him you will be righteous. You will be holy. You will not be with them.
Jesus name we pray a new set of ministers are going now back to the field of ministry God wants to go with you in the full light of his power and word. Raise up your hands as I pray for you. As you raise up your hands, just tell God I'm sorry for whichever way I fell. Some of you fell in your marriage, fell in your family, fell in your workplace. You fell in the church. You fell in business. Tell God you are sorry that you fell. Some of you fell into immorality. Tell God you are sorry that you fell. Some of you fell in training your children. Tell God you are sorry that you fell. Some of you fell in obeying your husbands. Tell God that you, you are sorry that you fell. Some of you fell in oppressing your wife. Tell God you are sorry that you fell. Some of you fell in outright disobedience. Tell God you are sorry that you fell. Let him give you another opportunity. Let him give you another opportunity. Let God give you another opportunity. Let God give you another opportunity. Ask him for another opportunity. Samson said, allow me this time once. My God, allow me this time once. Allow me, Lord, this time once. God, give me chance just this once. Just this once. Lord, let me go again. Let me go again. Let me go again. I will do it differently. I will do a new thing. God, watch me as you give me grace. And give me chance to go again. As you give me chance to go again. Oh Lord, you will see a difference. Father, you will see a difference. Jesus' name we pray. For Holy Ghost. O oh Lord, renew my ministry. Open my eyes to see Jesus. I see, see them. My Lord, Holy Ghost. Oh Lord, Another opportunity. Sing it one more time. Give me one more chance.
raise up your hand for prayer almighty father your sons and daughters ministers in your vineyard are asking you for another opportunity do it again give them your divine touch in the name of Jesus away iniquity from their lives remove their reproach in Jesus name <laughs> Holy Ghost come down Holy Ghost come down Holy Ghost come down anoint them anoint them anoint them empower them let your power come. Let your power come. Let anointing come. Let anointing come. Let the gifts of the Holy Spirit be released. Gifts of the Holy Spirit be released. Receive. Receive. Receive anointing. Receive power. Receive anointing. Receive power. Receive anointing. Receive anointing. Receive power. Receive power. In Jesus' name. May the Lord open the door for you again. May the Lord give the keys of the kingdom to you again. May the Lord handle the devil in your life. May the power of the Lord go with you. Let him go with you. Let him go with you. In Jesus' name. souls you used to convert it shall happen again it shall happen in a higher way it shall happen in a better way by the power of the Holy Ghost receive the Holy Ghost receive the Holy Ghost receive the Holy Ghost receive the Holy Ghost stretch forth your hand before God receive the Holy Ghost receive the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Open your mouth and begin to worship. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Receive. Power of the Holy Ghost. Worship. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Receive. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive anointing. Receive anointing. Receive the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit. Receive. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.
Savior. I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior. You came. Chased me with your blood. You are my Lord and my Savior. You left your throne above and took up the form of a servant for my sin. I believe in you Cause you are my Lord and Savior You are my Lord and Savior Jesus, I believe in you I believe in you Lord, cause you are You are my living Savior Jesus, I believe
I believe. I believe. 